two things, the pressure from the general public to demand that um, what that what what quality of life means to you is a worthy thing to demand of the healthcare system. I think it's part of training and incorporating that in training. It's also part of the policy. You know, um, India's uh, financing of healthcare has been very limited, and um, the ability to um, make people feel that they are they can afford to have basic care for pain, for suffering, as well as for survival. That's that's important as India grows richer. I think it's disturbing to me. The goal is not a good death in my mind. The goal is a, a good life all the way to the very end. And I can see circumstances where there's such unavoidable suffering that that is a, the point of discussion. But in India, what I see is a huge amount of avoidable suffering that we're not providing for people who face the last phases of their life. You know, just at a very basic level, making sure that um, narcotic medications for people suffering with severe cancer pain or, you know, bones that are breaking from um, uh, broken hips and things like that, that we treat pain and take it seriously. Of course, if someone is in severe pain, you haven't treated it, and you ask, would you want us to end your life? Yeah. <laughs> would you want us to give you some pain medicine? Even better. Yeah. Well, we're actually involved in a large project in uh, Uttar Pradesh now. Um, my last book was about the idea of applying a checklist in surgery could yeah. save lives. And we deliberately tested it, not only in the U.S., we also tested in India. It was in, in Delhi, in rural Tanzania, in the Philippines, in England, in the U.S. And taking a kind of pilot's checklist approach where the surgeon and team go through 19 key checks in less than two minutes, um, reduced deaths 47% across eight cities.